Okay, so welcome to chapter two. We're going to start really using some Excel data in here and some Excel spreadsheets. So I've got my PowerPoints open, but you'll also notice I have my chapter two Excel spreadsheet open. You'll find this spreadsheet in Blackboard under the lessons tab and under chapter two. Now there's lots of worksheets in this workbook. So I'm on specifically the marital status worksheet. It's kind it to the end you have to scroll if yours pulled up like mine did you're like adidas i can't find this keep scrolling all the way till you get to marital status so this is the one we're going to use for this first video and then we'll use some of the others later on so i'm going to go back to the powerpoint now and let's start the show so we're going to start looking again at um data using some real data and looking at it from a graphical start graphing some data so we have some of the data that we get specifically qualitative data that we get comes in this sort of summary format and we need to try to make sense of it and one of the ways that we can make sense of it is to create a frequency distribution and then graph it this gives us a visual visual representation. So the example we have here is weather conditions in Seattle. And so there were three options. You could classify it as rainy, cloudy, or sunny. And so each day of the 28 days is marked there as either rainy, cloudy, or Sunday, or sunny. So we have all the data in front of us, and this is great. We can look at this, but this isn't really in a good summarized form. So let's look at it in a more summarized form. We can make what's called a frequency distribution. So we can count how many days was it cloudy? Well, one. How many days was it rainy? It was rainy 20 days. How many days was it sunny? It was rainy seven. So out of the 28 total days, we know that one day was cloudy, 20 were rainy, and seven were sunny. So now we can compute a relative frequency or a percentage by dividing each frequency by the total. Since there were 28 days in total, then we know that 0 0.036 of the days were cloudy, or we could convert this to a percentage by either multiplying by 100, or you can, really cool, just move the decimal two places to the right, and now you have 3.6%. So 3.6% of the days in February were cloudy. Again, move our decimal two places to the right. 71.4% of the days were sunny, and 25.0% of the days were, excuse me, 71.4% were rainy, and 25% were sunny. Now, really important, whenever we compute relative frequencies, they have to add up to one, or if you're adding up your percentages, they will add up to 100%. Now, there might be some slight, it might be a little bit off due to rounding, but it's gotta be really, really, really close to one, has to be really close to one or 100%. So if you are doing this and you add it up and it gives you something like 3.65, you know you've made a mistake somewhere. So using the relative frequency allows us to compare maybe two different months of different numbers. So if we compare it with March, which has 31 days, now we can compare the relative frequencies. So here we again computed it to a percentage. You can multiply it by 100 or just move that decimal two places to the right. So again, it always has to add up to one. Now, a really great way to look at this is with a pie chart. So a pie chart or a circle graph you may have learned it by is a way to look at percentages that add up to a whole that would add up to 100%. So we can create a pie chart really easily in Excel, and we're going to go do that now. So I'm going to exit out of this, keep my annotations. Let's exit out of this, and we're gonna jump over here to my Excel spreadsheet. So here I have my Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. Is it gonna let me? Probably not. No. Okay, 
So here I have my Excel spreadsheet, and I have the relative frequency of marital status of women in 1960 and in 2010. So if I wanted to graph this using a pie chart, I can go in and I'm going to highlight the data that I want. So I first want to graph just 1960, then I'll graph the 2010 data. I can't graph them both in a pie chart at the same time. Now, really important, you don't want to grab the headers the, up here, the marital status in the 1960. If you grab that with your cursor when you're highlighting, it's going to come out all wrong. So now I can go to Insert. And over here under Charts, I've got lots of different options. I'm going to click the pie chart here. And if you click this little arrow, it's kind of hard to see, but if you click this little arrow, you have options. You can do a 2D pie chart. We can do a 3D pie chart. We can do a donut. I like to do a 3 I know the instructions in our book say to do a 2D pie chart, but I want to do a 3D pie chart because I think it's prettier. So I'm going to click this 3D pie chart here. And so notice that it gives me, it's graphed all the data for me, and it's automatically put in a legend or a key down here. So I can see the blue color is for married, the red color is single, the green is divorced, and the purple is widowed. Now I can change the chart title up here just by double clicking in that. And I, let's say that I want to change this to marital status in 1960. All right. And also, if you click this plus sign over here, this opens up the chart elements. So one of the things that I want to do is add data labels. Data labels give me not just the visual representation, but it gives me the data as well. So I definitely want to add data labels, and I'm going to click this button right here, and I want them, in this case, uh, I want them on the outside end. How about that? Now I can drag and make this larger and easier to see right here. You can go through these chart areas over here. You can change the colors. You can change the edges. We can make them soft. We can make them beveled. Um, you can play with it however you want to do it here. You can make them thicker, whatever you want to do over here. But we have our data. We have charted it. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller now. Now I can go in and I want to graph the data for 2010. So now, this is a little tricky because I want to graph 2010, but I also have to select the married. So I'm going to, the, the category over here, the marital status. So I'm going to highlight that and then I'm going to press the control key. And with the control key held down, now I've released my mouse button and now I'm going to select the 2010 data. So that allows me to select two non-adjacent sections. So I'm still going to go to insert. I'm going to choose my pie chart. Let's just choose the 2D one now. And so now I have right underneath it, Again, I'm going to make this one a little smaller so we can get them all up here together. Now I can compare marital status in 2010. Oh goodness, it would help if I could spell in 2010. And again, I want to add my data labels, so I'm going to choose those. I'm going to click outside end. And now I can compare, and again, you can change the format or anything you want. You can change the colors. But now I can easily compare the marital status in those two regions, and I have my charts to prove it. So I'm going to jump back now to my PowerPoint. So another way that I could look at this data is with a bar chart. You'll also hear it called a column chart. It typically, when we use a bar chart, that's referring to a more horizontal presentation, whereas a column chart is a more vertical presentation. But they're both forms of bar charts. So this bar chart would allow us to compare, again, the both years on the same graph as opposed to having to make two different pie charts like we did. We could look at both years on the same graph. So now let's jump back to Excel and look at that. Get out of this for a minute. So you can see that I've deleted the pie charts now, but I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select 
now all the data now I'm still not selecting my headers in row one but I'm selecting all the data I'm going to go over here to insert and now you have some options now see if you just hover your cursor over it it will give you a little summary so you can click insert column or bar chart um, we're going to talk about these histograms in the next video. You can also click recommended charts and recommended charts is a great one because based on your data that you have, it will recommend a chart for you. You're not stuck with it, but it makes a recommendation. So look, it recommended a column chart for us, which is just a vertical presentation. If we wanted that horizontal, we could come down here. So I'm going to go with that one and select OK. So now I have my chart. And I can go up here and change my chart title to say, goodness gracious, I can't click right. There we go. Marital status. Uh, we could just leave it as marital status. We could say mar marital status in 1960 and 2010. Now, notice that on my chart, it does give me a label, but the label just says series one and series two. I really want to know is that night which one is 1960 and which one is 2010 so up here I can do a couple of things I can go up here to oh, come back to my chart tools here So I can go up here to select data. So I'm in chart tools under the design tab and I can choose select data. Now, I want series one is 1960 because it was first. So I'm gonna make sure series one is selected over here and I'm going to press edit. Now that's in cell B1. So I'm gonna click B1 and click okay. And notice that it changed down here. Now it no longer says series one, it says 1960. So I'm now going to select series two, click edit, select 2010, okay. So now again, I have my chart and I can see the relative proportion or uh, relative frequency of women that were married, single, divorced, and widowed across these two time periods. I can also click the plus button. I can add data labels should I want to. I can add access titles, so we ha I could, if I wanted to change it to say marital status and relative frequency, I could do that. Um, I could do all sorts of things over here. I can click this paintbrush button and again change the colors. I could change how it appears. All sorts of different things you can kind of play around with. I like this one in particular where it kind of has the fuzzy lines. Um, but all sorts of different colors. We can make it black. We can make it really bold. That one's pretty. I like that one. So this gives us again that good representation of the data and how it's presented to us and gives us a visual so that we can see that um, married women is the percentage of women that are married has declined over time the percentage of women that are single has increased the percentage of women that are divorced has increased but the percentage of women that have been widowed has declined so if we jump back real quick to our, our slideshow, one last point I want to make is some cautionary comments on making charts. Number one, we really want to choose the simplest chart or the simplest graph. There's a lot of really complex ones in there and sometimes those are necessary, but most of the case, the more simple, the better. The easier it is to read, the better it is. We want to make sure our axes are clearly labeled. We want to have our legends or our keys labeled. We want to make sure the bars on the bar charts have the same width. Now, if you're creating it in Excel, they will have the same width. But if you're doing this manually or you're messing in Excel, you can change that. Um, you don't want to, but that can cause a distortion as you're looking at it, where even though the heights may be correct, if the widths are off, it can cause a distortion. You don't want your vertical axis to have a very high upper limit. So one of the things that we can do in Excel, and we'll look at this, is we can change the upper and lower limits. And sometimes that's necessary. Excel is pretty good at creating upper and lower limits that are pretty appropriate, although there are times that we do want to change it. But you want to make sure that it's not real high. 
because then it's going to automatically make your data look small. You also don't want your vertical axis to be stretched. Again, that's going to make your data look very small.